Welcome back to the Retro Remix project. In this video we will take the first look in the code of Lemos. And this will be not too detailed because we just want to get a feeling for the game flow. After watching the video you should have a good impression how to start the game from the main menu, how the level loads the needed assets, how we detect if a level is completed and then start the next level or return to the main menu. So we start in the main menu scene here and we have the game manager here like in every game and that is really small and its task is to keep track of the overall state of the game in which level we are and what levels exist. You can see it here. We have a list of levels, level 1 and level 2 and this is just level data like mentioned before and we only have one level scene that renders all the data accordingly. We have also a very small UI manager here and that has not too many tasks because we only have these two buttons, play game and select level. So you can see here this is the function start one player game and enter level code and these you can find here in the UI manager. And all that does is instruct the game manager to start a game or to open the level menu that we have entered here in the inspector. And when a new game should get started, let's control click on that. Then you can see here in the game manager we start level zero. So we start at the first level and what that does is it sets the current level to zero. And the current level is a variable that is in the game manager and by that the game manager always knows in what level we are and what is the next level. And when we set the level to the number, we can also use that to start level 2 or level 5 and so on. Then the scene manager gets instructed to load the level scene. And the level scene here is a constant that is defined at the beginning of the game manager class. And in Roller Maze we had all the level names in the scriptable objects for each level. But since we are only having two scenes here, the main menu scene we are in now and the level scene where all the level gets loaded and displayed, we have these as two constants here. Other functions of the game manager are for example to start next level and that just increases the number of the current level and loads the scene when there is a next level or loads the main menu when there is no level left. That means we have finished the game. It has also this check level code functionality. When we're in the level code menu where we can enter a level code, then the game manager goes through all its levels that are entered in the inspector and checks if that is an valid access code that has been entered. And when it finds that level for that access code, then that level is started. So starting a level loads the level scene. So let's do that by hand. And as you can see here we have just this placeholder background graphic and there are no amounts entered here in the UI for the available lemurs. That is all done by the level manager. This here is the level manager and all the magic how the level is set up happens here. So let's open it by double clicking. When the scene has loaded, then the level manager game object, you've seen it here, this is the game object and that holds the script level manager, is constructed by Unity and then a week is called on that script because we are on a game object. And we will take a closer look at the level manager in greater detail in the next video. For now we concentrate just on the flow of the game and here you can see the level data for the level we are in now gets pulled from the game manager. We are asking please game manager give me the current level data. And the game manager like we have seen knows what the current level is and delivers that level data for the current level. And now the level manager has all the data, knows what background graphic to use, how many lemurs we have available to use and so on. Then in the start method that level sprite renderer is set up with the level texture we have for that level. The exit and spawn gate are set at their positions and the UI is initialized with the available lemurs. And that is done in the level UI manager. The UI manager in the main menu is a different UI manager. This level UI manager is responsible for everything that is 
important in the level. So it is a close partner to the level manager, you could say. And when everything is set up, then the level UI manager fades in from black and shows the level start screen. You can find it here, the start level panel. This is where you get a preview of the level that is coming up and also what you have to do, how much time you have for that level and so on. You also have the message here, press mouse button to continue and that is detected by an event trigger. When the pointer, the mouse button is clicked, then start level in the level UI manager is called. And that then tells the level manager, hey, you can start the level. And then the level manager says, okay, I'm ready. Please, your manager, do me a fade to black and then back again. And when you are in black, then do the following stuff. The level start screen gets hidden, then the spawn gate is opened, the level is unpaused and the music starts to play. And from that point on, you can see here the update method runs only when the game has started. Then we check for input, we check if we have a limo under our cursor, we can assign tasks and so on. Like I said, that will be a topic for the next video. For now, let's just take a look at advanced timers. Here we check in regular intervals if a new limo should be spawned and then we call spawn limo accordingly. And the level manager keeps track of all limos that have been spawned. Like you can see here, Limos out gets increased when a new Limo is spawned, then a new Limo prefab gets instantiated and the whole Limo script, we will take a closer look at that in the video after the level manager video. The Limo then gets added to a list of Limos, so we not only know how many Limos are out, but we also keep track of all the Limos in a list. You can see here it's a list of Limo objects. An important part for the game flow is that each limo has an on limo exited and an on limo died event. And for each limo, we, the level manager, subscribe because we are interested in those two events. And for example, when a limo has exited, then we want limo has exited to be called here. That is that function here. Let's take a small look at that event where it is used. Here you can see when a limo, we are in the limo script here, reaches the exit, and then exit gets called on that limo, and on limo exited, this event gets invoked and informs everyone who is interested that a limo has exited, and we also give the limo that has exited as a parameter for that event. So that means every time a limo exits, then limo has exited gets called, and we know the sender was the limo, we have seen it here. This is the sender of that event. And then the level manager knows it no longer needs to track that limo, so it gets removed from the list of limos. And then we decrease also the limos that are out and increase the limos that are in. So our UI can display how many are out and we can also calculate the percentage how many limos are already in the exit. And every time that happens when a limo exited we have to check if we can now finish the level and that is the method here. Usually when all the limos have spawned that is compared to the max limos that are available on that level and we have that because we cut the level data from the game manager when starting the level and when no more limos are out then we know that the level is finished. And then we call the finish level method here with a delay of three seconds. So there is a bit waiting time that the last limo can get out. And here first we can see if the level has been passed, if our saving rate of maybe 80% or 90%, whatever the level data suggests has been fulfilled. And then the level UI manager should fade to black and back and display the level resume panel where all the information is gathered how well you have performed in that level. You can find that here, it's the resume level panel. And right now there's no text because all the text for that panel gets generated after the level has finished. But you can see here we have a custom script instead of um, 
event trigger here. We use a different method here just to demonstrate a different approach. And that is a custom script that can differentiate if there was a left click or right click. But for now, it doesn't matter. We just want to detect if there was a click done by the user. And this script has the advantage that we can give the used mouse button to the function that is called here. So level UI manager leave level is called. And that again just calls the level manager and tells it yes, we can leave the level now. The player has clicked the button in the resume screen. And here you can see we get the information if left or right mouse button has been clicked. And we have to differentiate if the level has been passed. So if we were successful, then we want to fade to black and instruct the game manager to start the next level. And what that does, we have seen before, we increase the current level number. And depending on if there are more levels to play, we just reload the current level scene or else we go back to the main menu. If you don't have passed the level, then we get instructed. We can repeat that level when pressing the left mouse button and that check is done here. When having pressed the left mouse button, then we restart the level by calling the game manager instance restart level or by using the right mouse button, we can go back to the main menu. And let's go back one more time to start next level. We are right now in the level scene and we're increasing the current level number and then we reload the current scene. And what that does, everything except the game manager, because that has a don't destroy on load in the script, everything here gets thrown away and the level gets loaded anew. That means that also the level manager gets destroyed and a new level manager game object is created. And by that, the awake method is also called again because now we are on a new game object and that is a complete new level manager. And then the same thing happens as before. We get the current level data from the game manager, which is now for the next level because we have increased the level number and the setup is exactly the same as before. And then we can play the next level. So that is everything you need to know about the game flow. That was a quick rundown through a few scripts and how the game goes from the main menu to the level scene and to the next level to the next level and finally back to the main menu. As mentioned before, in the next video, we will take a closer look at the level manager and how everything is set up, how the minimap gets created, how the background gets created from the texture data and so on. And the video after that, we will take a closer look at the Limo script and finally get to know what makes them tick, how do they move, how do they check for collisions and how do they receive the instructions that you give them. I hope to see you there. Until then, happy creating and take care.